Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and we're going to talk about layout some more. So last time we talked about kind of the introduction, it's kind of where are things in layout, how to get around that kind of thing. Today, what we want to dive into is actually using it. So that's a great way to learn how to use software is to use it. Um, so we're going to look at what may be one of the most important parts of layout, and that is bringing in a SketchUp model and setting it up in layout. So let's go ahead and hop in and do just that. Okay, so I have an empty layout document right here. So first thing I'm going to do is go to file and click insert and choose the layout file. Excuse me, choose the SketchUp file I want to import. So here's my SKP file. I'm going to go ahead and click open and it's going to drop that on the page. You see it does, it's in a section view of this model. It looks at the last view you used when you were in SketchUp. So when I was editing this file, last time I saved it, I was in this section view. This can be moved around. I can just click and drag to move it around holding on the modifier key. Uh, option or control, depending on your operating system, will actually make a duplicate of the selected viewport. So I'm going to delete that one. You can also do things like rotate it. So here in the middle, I have a little rotate handle. I'm just going to click on that handle and I can spin it around 180 degrees. Uh, and then resizing. So I can grab any of these handles and just pull it to make it as big as it can get on the screen. And you'll see what's happening is it's actually stretching out and it's making the model bigger. As I'm stretching that out, it's actually changing the scale of the drawing inside. We'll talk about that more in just a minute. The other thing I can do in here, um, obviously zooming around, moving around, if I scroll my, my mouse wheel, it zooms in and out of the page I'm working on, not in the document, because I'm not actually in the SketchUp model right now. I'm working with a piece of paper, so I can't zoom, pan, anything like that. I'm actually working inside of the document, and this is a viewport in my document. So if I did want to change my view, how could I do that? I could do it a couple different ways. So we're going to start by looking over here. This is my SketchUp model window. I want to make sure you have this on. If it's not automatically on, you want to go to Windows and make sure SketchUp model is active. And this is going to show us the information about what's inside the selected model window. So let's walk through this. There's actually quite a bit to it, but this is real important to understand because it controls how you interact with the SketchUp model while you're in layout. So in here, uh, it does tell me the name of the file. So this is samplehouse.skp. That's the file I imported. I have a couple buttons right here to uh, resync and relink. Uh, resync just says make sure that this file is up to date with the actual file. So what, what I'm seeing in layout is up to date with what's inside SketchUp. Relink will let me connect this viewport to a different SketchUp file. So this is important if I do something like if I have a revision one and then I make changes, so I'm on revision two and I want to not go recreate my whole layout, but just import different files, that's where Relink comes into play. I can actually use Relink to change what's showing here without having to go through manually input new model windows. I also have the ability to lock. So once everything's right, everything's perfect in here, I can hit lock. This is going to prevent if somebody else is looking at this file, they're not going to be able to come and change it. They can't move it. They can't change properties. Also prevents me from accidentally bumping something and making it incorrect if I'm on my way to output. Of course, I'm going to unlock it now because I want to make changes. So I talked about the views. It's in the last scene that I use, which is my section B. But if I want to jump to something else, like let's, let's go to a roof view. Let's look at this thing from the top down and click on roof and it'll jump to that view. It kept the same scale, but it just changed to my roof view. So my scene for my roof. Um, I do have the ability here to make some changes for line scales. I have two options here, dash scale and stroke width. So these are gonna behave differently depending on your view of the SketchUp model. So it gets a little confusing because it does say dashed scale, but you can see as I bump this number up a little bit, I'm actually going to see my solid lines. So let's, let's make a big change. Let's jump up to like two, two point. See how my lines got bigger? These aren't dashes, but dashes are the names, what we call the line types that are associated with each tag. So these are all tagged with a solid dash. And by changing the, the number here, it actually changes that. Um, line strokes are going to be a little bit different. Stroke width is going to show up when you start dealing with different uh, types of styles. So I'm going to set this back to, um, I don't even remember what it was, 0.6. Let's see what 0.6 looks like. That's nice. All right, below that, I have some options for how I'm going to actually view this model on the screen. So first thing 
is my rendering flag. Right now, this is set to auto render. That says any change I make, go through and update this viewport and make sure everything is current. This sounds great, but it can be an issue, depending on how big a model you're working with, to have it always update every single time. If you turn that off, you'll get the option of manually re-rendering if something changes. I recommend doing that unless you're dealing with something very simple because it can be a time consuming thing to re-render each window just because you bumped some small piece, turned one tag off or something like that. To the right is my render style. So I have options here, raster, vector, hybrid. So I'll show you what that is real quick. I'm gonna zoom in right here on this corner. Yeah, doesn't look so good when we get close. This is what raster does. Raster is dots, it's a bunch of dots. So it shows our, our materials that we put in SketchUp real well, but lines can get kind of funky, especially if they're on angles. Even the straight lines are kind of blurry. Um, looks good when you're far out, but if you zoom in, you'll see it gets kind of messy. Well, how do we fix that? Or how do we change that? Well, if we switch to vector, when I change to vector, it's gonna change how it draws the screen, but you see nothing changed because I turned auto render off. So I have to manually come over here and tap render. When I do that, it's gonna to switch to vector render. So vector changes that, look, look at these nice crisp lines. Everything is very crisp. It's a vector drawing now, so it has data about where the lines go and then it actively draws those lines. What we lose with vector though, is our texture. So if I zoom out here, my whole roof, look at that, my whole roof just turned one color. Not, not so pretty. I, I spent a lot of time applying that material. So how do I take advantage of both? Well, I can turn on hybrid. What hybrid does, I'm gonna go ahead and click that, it's gonna tell me that this is the most intense style to render. It does look the best most times, but uh, it will take longer to render. So I'm gonna go ahead and render that and talk about what that does. That's gonna render my whole drawing in first that raster view, so it puts all my textures on, and then over top of the raster view, draws my lines with vectors. So this is the generally the best looking way to render your drawing. Downside is, like it said, it is the most intensive, so the most time consuming way to render as well. One thing you could do, what some people do, is they do all of their active work in raster and then come back and switch to hybrid for output. That's a great way to do it. It does mean going through and double checking each of your model viewports before you export or print, but uh, it's, the most, it's the fastest way to render for sure. So those are your options for uh, the first piece of SketchUp model. So we have a couple more. There's one, two, three, four more drop downs. They're all collapsed right now. If I click on one of these, it drops it down. So in here we have our camera view. What are we looking at? We have our standard cameras right here that I can switch between. So right now I actually do want a top view. I like that, but it's not the right size. So what I can do is I can come to current scale and pick a size that's gonna fit on the page. You can see right now it's set to one to 77.7668 scale. So I would call that a non-standard scale. Let's go ahead and jump down to something like eighth inch equals a foot. Again, nothing happened because we don't have render turned on. So I'm gonna to have to manually render to go through and redraw my drawing and we can see that, okay, that actually pretty well fits. Scale only works if ortho is turned on. This is extremely important. Ortho is, says we're looking straight down on this from above. So this means I'm not gonna get any perspective, not gonna fall off, it's gonna be straight on, which is the way a lot of documents are, are viewed. It's kind of our standard for architecture what we're used to seeing. As long as ortho is turned on, then as I make changes to this box, it's not going to change what's on the inside. I'm gonna re-render that real quick so I can get the edge back right here. All right, looking good. Um, that is preser preserved scale on resize. So that says as I make these changes, I move the edges around, it's not going to change what's on the inside. If I'm in a position where my scenes or my standard view don't show what I need to show, I can change what's in here. If I double click into the scene, I will get my little ortho, or I'm sorry, my orbit tool, and I can move this around just like I was inside of SketchUp. I can also right click and choose other camera tools like plan or pan, zoom window, or look around. I can also toggle perspective on and off. 
doing any of these things in here, so making these changes will potentially mess up your connection to a standard preservable scale. Just something to note. But you can make those changes if you need to. So if I needed this specific view inside one of my viewports and didn't have it saved as a scene, not a big deal because I'd come in here and get this view and actually save it into this model window. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that to get me back to that view I had before looking top, top down. Okay, so let's keep going through here. The next dropdown is called effects. Effects are specifically shadow and fog. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn both of these on and then re-render. Shadows and fog are going to pull the settings that you have in the model and let you see them in your view. That's all, it's not the full UI. I don't have the ability to go in and change the, the depth of the fog or you know, the location that the shadows fall from. I have a little bit of control here. I can change the time or date that the shadows fall. I can change the color of the fog, but that's it. So it's, it's a little bit of, of ability to change there, but I can't go override all the information that I have set up back in the SketchUp model. All right, let's go back. Working our way down here, styles. Styles are great. Anybody who uses SketchUp knows that styles can make your model look really awesome. You have the ability to access any of your styles from SketchUp while you're inside of layout. You cannot, however, modify these. So if I wanna come in here and I wanna change this to uh, one of my existing styles, I can pick the style, I can render it, and it'll draw it in that style. I don't have the ability to go in though now and change my background color or you know the different line types. I just pick from what already exists and render it out. And then finally, we have tags. Tags are the ability to go in here and turn my individual tags on and off. So if I wanted to, let's, let's go take the roof off. Um, let's see, where's my second roof? Keep going, there it is. So if I turn my roof off and re-render this, it'll draw it without this second roof on and I'll actually be looking down into the walls below. Okay, so that was a lot of information, I know, but that is kind of everything I could think to talk about while you're inside of a model window. That, that toolbar right there, right there, controls all of the information that you need to set your model up so that it looks good inside of layout. I recommend taking a model, creating some scenes, so some views you actually wanna look at in layout, model everything one-to-one, -one. that's an important piece. SketchUp Pro, one-to-one -one modeling, that, that has to happen. Bring that into a layout model, set it to scale, and create some viewports on there. We'll talk more about creating multiple viewports and having different types of, of windows inside of layout, but that was an overview of how to use your model viewport inside of layout. Did you like that video? If so, click like down below, and if you haven't already, please click subscribe. We create a lot of videos around here, and you'll be notified if you click the subscribe button. Most importantly though, please do leave us a comment. Most, if not, all of the content we do at this point is derived from comments from viewers like you, and we'd love to hear what you think. We like making these videos a lot, but we like making them even more when they're showing something you wanna see. Thank you.